In this video, I will build two different simple and inexpensive low-pressure float valves which control water levels in hydroponic and sub-irrigated container gardening systems. But first, I want to discuss simple design concepts. Let us begin. Water will be supplied by simple tanks such as this container which is elevated by concrete blocks. Tanks will be elevated less than 10 feet above the float valves and supply water at a maximum pressure of 4.3 psi. A water supply tank is represented by this one gallon plastic bottle. A slightly undersized hole is drilled in the bottle and one quarter inch plastic tubing is forced through the hole. This is a watertight connection. A butane lighter softens the plastic tubing and makes it easier to insert the plastic connector fitting into the tubing. Do not overheat or burn the plastic tubing. The open end of the connector becomes a nozzle with a 3 mm orifice and a flat bottom. The lower 2-3 to mm of the nozzle is nearly a vertical cylinder. Water travels by gravity flow from the tank and through the polyethylene tube to this nozzle. The nozzle must be sealed shut to stop the water flow. SureTape IT100 1 8 inch thick polyethylene foam material works well as a seal to stop the water flow, but I'm on the lookout for an even better material. The nozzle presses against the foam material and stops the water flow. The polyethylene foam can be attached to an empty plastic bottle which floats in water. The rising water level generates a buoyant force and stops the water flow by pushing the foam seal against the nozzle. How much buoyant force is needed to stop the water flow? The calculated theoretical buoyant force needed to stop water flowing from a 10 foot head in 4 mm inner diameter tubing is 38 grams. In actual practice, more force will be needed depending on the properties of the nozzle and the seal and the preciseness of their contact. Let's try a rather crude way to determine the force needed for this nozzle and foam seal. Here the nozzle is held firmly by a 2 inch PVC end cap which has been slip fitted onto a PVC pipe. This is the unobstructed water flow. Foam is glued to the bottle cap and contacts the nozzle. The bottle plus a metal nut weighs about one and a half ounces and stops the water flow from a head pressure of four feet or about 1.7 psi. When the tank is raised to a 10 foot height, an additional 48 grams is added for a total of 90 grams of buoyant force to stop the water flow. If materials other than this nozzle and polyethylene foam are used, the force needed to stop the water flow will be a different value. Notice the impression that the nozzle makes in the foam seal. Nozzles need to have an absolutely flat bottom. Nozzles with manufacturing imperfections such as this remnant flap will not seal properly. Button drippers may be acceptable nozzles. They are placed with the flat side connected to the tubing and work well if the nozzle has a flat bottom and a steep angle. Now that we understand the basics, let's try to build two different float valve models. Let's call this the Kratky float valve model 101, the bottle model. A plastic tubing connector is inserted into one quarter inch irrigation tubing, which is softened by heating with a butane lighter. Use a miter box to make flat cuts on a 4.5 inch length of 2 inch diameter PVC pipe. Cap is slip fitted onto the PVC pipe. A 5 16 inch hole is drilled into a 2 inch PVC end cap. Two holes are drilled directly opposite of each other about one quarter inch from the bottom. 
One hole is 5 32nd inch diameter and the other hole is 1 8 inch. The tubing is threaded through the hole. The nozzle fits tightly into the hole. This fixes the nozzle in a vertical position. A vitamin bottle fits into the 2 inch PVC pipe. This bottle is 3.5 inches high, weighs 20 grams, and has a volume of 120 milliliters. It will have a maximum buoyancy force of 100 grams because 20 grams of buoyancy force are needed just to lift the bottle. The lid is placed tightly on the vitamin bottle. SureTape IT100 polyethylene foam has a sticky side. A 1 inch square is glued to the top of the bottle cap. It weighs about a quarter of a gram. The bottle is dropped into the pipe. A cable tie is threaded into the holes on the bottom of the pipe. This keeps the bottle from falling out. The tie goes easily in the larger hole, but has a tight friction fit in the smaller hole. Oops! This float valve didn't seal. What could be the problem? This cap has a dimple in the center and that discourages a good seal. Flip top bottles should also be avoided because water tends to leak into the bottle and reduce buoyancy. The cap should be smooth like the bottle on the right. A remedy for both dimple caps and flip top caps is to place smooth caps over them. Adding more weight such as a small block of untreated lumber will deter the float valve from floating and tipping when operating at full buoyancy. The float valve is placed in a container and the tubing is connected to the tank. It maintains a one and a half inch water level. When operating at a head pressure above five feet, it would be prudent to build a similar float valve with a larger bottle and a three or four inch diameter pipe. Now let's turn our attention to model 102, the sealed food container. I bought two polypropylene sealable food containers at a dollar store for a dollar. Attach a 4 inch length of untreated 2x4 to the container bottom with two screws, being careful not to crack the plastic. The 2x4 lumber helps to stabilize the nozzle in a vertical position and keeps the float valve weighted down. Drill a 1 quarter inch hole through the center of the container and the wood. Take care to make the hole as vertical as possible because an off center hole will result in a slanted nozzle position which will not seal properly. Enlarge the first half of the hole with a 5 16 inch drill because the connector plus tubing is larger than the tubing alone. A plastic tubing connector is inserted into 1 quarter inch irrigation tubing which is softened by heating with a butane lighter. The nozzle fits snugly into the hole. The nozzle should be in a vertical position. Extruded polystyrene has a uniform structure, low density, high buoyancy, and absorbs very little water and is preferred over expanded polystyrene. Cut a three and three quarter inch square and also a four and a half inch square and trim corners as needed so they fit into the container. Drill two five thirty second inch holes in a one inch or larger plastic bottle cap. Larger is better. Attach a one inch or larger square of SureTape IT100 to the cap. Position the cap in the center of the smaller extruded polystyrene. Cut two one inch lengths of cable tie and force them on an angle into the polystyrene. This will hold the cap into position. Drill several one eighth inch or larger drain holes in the lid of the container. Place the extruded polystyrene into the container and snap the lid on the container. Done? 
although the buoyancy of the extruded polystyrene would be sufficient to support more than 4.3 psi water pressure, the other components are not designed for higher pressure. The float valve is placed in a bucket and the tubing is connected to the tank and maintains about a 1 inch water level with a 2 foot head of water. If a higher water level is needed, then simply raise the float valve. Well, there you have it. Two working float valve models. Both are enclosed, so it will be difficult, though not impossible, for roots to get into the float valve and clog the mechanism like what commonly happens to many lever type designs. Materials for these float valves cost from about $1 to $3 per float valve. They are economical enough that you can afford to install one in every growing container. Let's be real clear. These float valves will only function properly at low pressures, that is below 4.3 psi or 10 feet of head pressure. The quarter inch poly tubing from the float valve can be inserted directly into one half inch poly tubing or plastic tanks like this barrel or a trash container, or a small plastic tank, and no fittings are needed. Before using these floats for the first time, they should be rinsed off well to remove any easily soluble contaminants. Float valve components directly contact water. Most of the components are made from polyethylene and polypropylene, which have low toxicity to humans and animals. Health concerns have been expressed about some aspects of PVC and polystyrene plastics. However, PVC pipes are approved for portable water. Polystyrene cups are commonly used for cold drinks, but hot drinks cause concern. Thus, based on current standards, it would appear that these materials are reasonably safe for the manner they will be used in float valves for plant growing systems. Information on material safety is included in the written comments below. Perhaps this will spur you on to find substitute components which you feel are safer. In fact, I really hope that you will make improvements to these float valves and discover even better components. I look forward to seeing your YouTube videos featuring these improvements and also will be very curious to see how you will use the float valves. For example, these sub-irrigated, container-grown plants have been watered with an earlier float valve design. I will be testing the new float valve design in my hydroponic and container gardening systems and hope to make YouTube presentations on the progress. But for now, I bid you Aloha!